when Snow and I started on this journey, and actually before when we talked about this journey, one of the biggest things we talked about was health care and the importance of getting on the road before we got too old or our health deteriorated in such a way where we couldn't travel like we do. And then if something did happen on the road, what will we do about it? How would we handle it? Insurance. And so we've had several discussions. And for those of you who've been watching, no, we've actually had situations on the road. You know, I've had some ear infections. Uh, obviously, Snow had her knee totally replaced. And so we kind of have a strategy when something happens. But when something, when something really catastrophic happens, you're just never prepared for this. You all are not gonna believe this, but we are camping right here in Buen, downtown Buenos Aires tonight. We are boondocking in the city, one of the largest cities, the largest city in Argentina. It's a city of about 15 million, and it's right here on the river in the bay, and there's some beautiful birds there. And there's also sorts of activities going on. I can't wait to show you guys this place. So it looks like all the little food stalls along here basically have similar foods, hamburgers, some with fried eggs, sort of like a lomo or cheesesteak sandwich, chicken sandwich, and then they have salchichas. And my experience here is the sausage here is pretty much beef. Chori pan is what they call it here. You can see the big piles of it. Um, not a lot of other vineyards. I think it might be a little late in the day. Here we got a, a cotton candy, and it looks like some uh, candied covered nuts. Uh, I'm not sure, and some other sweet things. Yeah, look at that. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. There are definitely several drum circles around, and there's also some people with their trunks up, with the big speakers, playing some music and dancing around. I can tell you, even though it's a bit breezy and it's definitely cold, I'm gonna tell you it's down close to 60. Uh, still a pretty active crowd. Looks like we're not the only ones stealth camping here. I think these people have set up permanent shop right here in front of the plot, John. Look at that thing. And ain't moved in a while. A lot of baby clothes here. Some, a lot of silver jewelry. So there's a little bit of handcrafted stuff. But there's a lot of silver. Huh, an old Xbox controller. Crazy mouse. So this little store area, this little market area, goes on for quite a bit. It's kind of in the main road. They've closed it down. So I'm guessing this is a typical Sunday market. Maybe they only do it once a month. I don't know. Here's some incense and some little troll dolls. Look at these things. Ooh. They have some sweeties here. Let's see what they got. That looks pretty good. Oh, now these are the little tea things, but they look like commercialized beverages. So I think, yeah, I think they've taken aluminum cans and converted them into little tea containers. <laughs> Interesting. More Buddha stuff. 
seen quite a bit of that along the streets, believe it or not. Couple of these little troll and fairy stands, crochet, crafts. Oh, here's more of these tea things. So you can see they take this tea thing to another level. They've even got the bags, boxes, sort of like backpacks, everything you can imagine. This tea stuff is for real. So pretty much kind of mostly standard stuff you'd see at a market. Obviously the tea is a local thing not so much international and also those little troll dolls i'm not sure if they're an international thing or not you guys know better than me i haven't seen a lot of those trolls around but anyway pretty straightforward market gonna head back onto the van get it tightened down for the night wake up in the morning i want to show you guys the birds all right we are hitting up the food truck and we're getting Tory Pines, sausage dogs. No, no, In the van, I do. And then we got these toppings. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. <laughs> All kinds of sauces. Everything. Uh, I guess. <laughs> Bonito here tells us this is the hot one, right? Yeah, that's the hot one. And this one's Maso Manos. What do you call this? Chimichurri. Nombre, nombre, uh, chimichurri. Chimichurri. Eso. Nosotros decimos Provenzal. Provenzal? Provenzal. Criolla. Criolla. Lechuga. Berenjena con chimichurri. Okay. Vinegar. Vinegar. Yeah. Vinegar with this. Ah, vinegar. Ah. Oh, okay. in Espanol, vinagre. <laughs> in Argentina, it's different. Uh, poco. Poco. Okay. Snow. <laughs> Mucho gusto. <laughs> so we brought this food back to the van because it is cold out there. But Kurt, how much for these two sausage dogs? I even got an egg on mine. It's big giant sausage with egg. And by the way, I got some of that, what was it called? Chimichurri yeah, sauce? Yeah. And I got some of the hot stuff too. The really hot stuff. But it was it was a dollar for both for each so it was 300 which we just got yeah dollar so that's two dollars a dollar two dollars for $2. giant $2. sausage dogs oh wait i think i also had to pay 50 50 for cents egg. for the egg yeah so whatever that is it's like 30 cents all right wild camping in buenos aires comes with cheap <laughs> sausage dogs and background music <laughs> yeah so it's a pound 11.15, I woke up because I heard some activity outside of our door and I look outside and they have set up a DUI checkpoint right by our van. They just got it going. They've pulled over about four people on the other side of this big yellow van. If you look right down here, you'll see the sign, the traffic control. I don't know what's going to happen if they find one that's drunk, but I can't sleep, so at least I have something to watch. DUI checkpoint in the middle of Buenos Aires, right outside of our campsite. <laughs> Hilarious. We have left our campsite in the middle of Buenos Aires, and we are out and about driving in this crazy city because we have a few errands to run. We need to find parking. Yeah, we need to find parking, and first we need to find money. We're hoping the Western Union's here carry more money and that we'll be able to get a 
a good stash of money rather than having to find a Western Union every darn day. So let's go maneuver this traffic in our big old giant van. Morning guys. Started off as a rough day. I got kicked out of a violation for the last parking spot. I parked there for two nights here in Buenos Aires. Street parking is extremely difficult to find here, uh, but we really don't have much of a choice. And the last time we talked to you, we were running errands in, in town and snow had a serious medical condition. And so she's at the hospital right now. I had to move the car, uh, the van, find another parking space and shortly I'm going to go back over and check on her but it's been a truly truly traumatic situation um, fortunately the, the, we've been able to find parking uh, I've been staying in the van on the streets of Buenos Aires which I know is not really kind of the smartest thing to do but under the circumstances we really don't have an option so Fingers crossed that Snow gets good news today. She's been in intensive care for a couple days. So let's go check on her. So I'm in a cab. I'm headed over to the hospital to get the news about Snow. And my cab driver's pretty cool, but he won't tell me his name. But we were chatting a little bit. But he wouldn't let me get in unless I spoke Spanish. So I passed the test. Anyway, guys, we're almost here to the hospital. So the good news is, even though she's been here a few days, is she's kind of moved up. So after about a day in the emergency room, uh, wrong door. After a day in the emergency room, she got moved to the intensive care unit. And there was a lot of activity around, as I'm sure you guys can imagine, and the other stalls next door but last night after I left they moved her to a private room so this is the Italian hospital and it's right here in the middle of Buenos Aires the guard already told you guys this is a city of 15 million and it's a nice hospital it's supposed to be the best hospital in town and uh, the doctors we've all had and met with the nurses who've been really kind, really super attentive. And also, a lot of them speak English or they always have English people around us. So, this is, they call it here, I think the UCI, but let's go in and see if we can see her. Even though Snow's in the hospital, she's still peeing and pooing in a bucket. It's a good it's thing she's had. It's a good thing she's had lots of practice. <laughs> now I just got here. I haven't even really talked to her yet, so I kind of surprised her with the camera. But let me have a few moments with her, and then we'll catch you guys up. Hey guys, it has taken me over four days to figure out how to actually say this out loud and share it with y'all. We have had a very rough, scary, yeah, scary few days here in Buenos Aires. I know you know I'm in the hospital, but I'm about to tell you what happened. Over the past week or so, it began to get kind of hard for me to breathe. I thought I had a chest cold. But then there were two nights that I would literally wake up in the middle of the night not being able to catch my breath, a very scary feeling. So we came here to a hospital in Buenos Aires to get some tests. Honestly, I thought I would leave with some antibiotics for my chest. But after being in the ER for a few hours, seeing a doctor, getting a chest x-ray, an EKG and some blood work, Kurt was out in the van because we were parked in kind of a weird place, so it was by myself because, guys, I really thought it was no big deal. But then I find myself being sat down on a hospital bed surrounded by about 10 cardio doctors. My heart was in very bad shape. Uh, my lungs were full of fluid, and uh, they didn't know what was wrong. So um, 
that's a very scary thing to have happen, especially in a foreign country, especially when we had decided it was no big deal and Kurt was waiting in the van. But I called him and he was there within maybe three minutes. It probably never moved so fast. I, I've been here four days. I'm not gonna go through all the drama other than to tell you two of those days I was in ICU. And uh, the other two days I was in semi-ICU, so I did get to move to kind of a private room. Um, I have heart failure. They put in a stent in my left ventricle, and uh, I don't still don't understand all this. I still have some learning to do on what's going on. Um, I also have some damage to the muscle wall of my left side of my heart. And there's a little tiny artery in there that also likely will need a stent, but it wasn't so urgent, so we'll do that and maybe a month or so. So while they're in there, they can see how the really important stent is working. Um, uh, the doctor seems pleased. The fluid is all gone. I responded very well to the medicine on that. I feel fine, other than being scared to death, to be really, really honest with you guys. Uh, 50 years old and the doctor tells me they think I likely had a heart attack. 50 years old. It's not something you think about. Uh, but anyway, we are going to figure it out. Uh, we knew we would tackle things while we were on this journey. Um, I'm thankful we were in Buenos Aires, an international city with a very good hospital. Uh, we've been working with the head of the cardio department here. He comes in every day. He's been overseeing my case and he speaks really good English. He spent some time in the States, so that's very helpful. But it looks like at the very least, I will be taking medication, I think a lot of it, for the rest of my life. And then there's the chance I may need to get another stent. And if the first stent, the very important one that they put in two days ago, uh, doesn't work, then we will go to, I think it's a pacemaker. He's calling it a defibrillator that they put in your chest. But anyway, we have a good plan. Uh, it may slow us down for a month or so here in Buenos Aires, but we do have a very good plan. We have a good doctor. Uh, we'll have to figure out how we're gonna handle follow-ups. And we'll we'll do that once we have a final verdict here on how that first very important stint is working. So we will continue to travel. Do not worry. Uh, scary moments like this make me very happy that we made the decision to leave corporate America early and get out here and actually live. So we're going to keep doing that. You just may see us stop every three or six months or whatever they recommend and me go in and get some heart tests just to see how things are doing. But that's that. Yeah, I had a heart attack. <laughs> it's the first time I've said that out loud it's on this vlog, guys. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, it's gonna be okay. We have some adjustments to make and I should be getting discharged today knowing that I need to come back in three or four weeks and be admitted again for some, some more extensive testing. But uh, it's all good. We'll get everything sorted out here and we're still headed south to see the very tip of South America and we're still gonna take you with us. Uh, when this is all over and done with, I'll give you a recap on what something like this costs in Argentina. So we're probably gonna take a day or two guys to just kind of figure out some of our new reality and then we'll be back and uh, we'll be back. I know I'm gonna get tons of support from you guys. So thank you in advance. And if you haven't had a checkup with your doctor in a while, go get one, okay? Cause my EKG took about a minute to do they do them in doctor's offices and it alerted them that something was wrong.
Go get your annual checkup, guys. 50 years old, living my life out here, and had a freaking heart attack. See y'all in a day or two.